with nine hours, how fast before, how soon could that telescope get to say the most distant planet, Pluto? And the answer is about 10 years. And only because it uh, actually cheated and picked up some extra speeds so of flying very close to Jupiter at some point. If it hadn't done that, it would be 15 years. Nine hours to the moon, 15 years to Pluto. Well, the case of astronomy that has fascinated since I was very young, as my parents tell me since I was about three years old, yeah. that I would look at the sky and point out the shapes in the clouds, and that then I assumed that one day the clouds disappeared and I saw the real stuff. So it has been an, a fascination for a very long time. Well, welcome to the universe. I hope you like it. <laughs> I hope you see it like you've never seen it before. Um, I find it rather important that students uh, get in touch with real science. I mean, when you study at university or at school, it is not just a matter of picking up, uh, learning how to deal with fixed problems. With science, what we try to teach the children and the students is to solve problems they don't know yet. So whatever they happen later in their work life, what, uh, when the world changes, when you get new problems, they are equipped to deal with that. They have not just learned to deal with the problems of yesterday, but they can deal with the future. And that is something that science can do for people, and that nothing else can do. And so to get a people like here, uh, here to see them interested in, uh, in a variety of scientific talks, I think is excellent. Yeah. So what you can see here is a cloud fragmenting. It started out as a cloud 100,000 light years across, and it being contracting under its own gravity. It's a numerical simulation, of course, if it's done on the computer. What you can see is the, some areas get denser and denser. Let's <coughs> see how this now evolves. Again, you can see this tenuous gas around it and this core. Let's focus in on the center. You can see here is quite a dense area where gravity is. Oops, what's happening there? A star is forming. Note, there is things rotating around it. More stars are forming. The stars are, here's another one. Um, everything is beginning to fall into the center. That's what gravity does. A career in research can be a big commitment. It's an unstable life. I mean, I've lived and worked in three different continents in five different countries so far. And so you move around often. Jobs can be short term. On the other hand, there is no other work you can do that is as fascinating as this. So there is an, uh, it's worth it, in my opinion. On the other hand, many people go into research for some time. They go get a degree, they may go for a PhD, they may do a postdoc. At any of these points, people will stop doing research and move into what they then call the real world and take up an, a job. I've never heard anyone uh, regretting spending time in research. And when I studied, had to, to choose a study at university, um, I was interested in astronomy and that was an offer. I wouldn't have done physics probably, that didn't interest me nearly as much. Um, and I've been lucky that I've just rolled from one thing into another. I've been out of astronomy for one year when I worked as an editor, but otherwise it's been a continuous career. Um, of course, when you make your hobby your work, you have to choose another hobby. Otherwise your life gets very monotonic. Um, but it's, if you have the chance to make your, uh, your hobby your life, good luck.